Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video I'll be talking about all the best features for your Y17. By the way guys, I've already made a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I've talked about many things that I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the first best feature about this phone is definitely its display. This phone sports a 6.35 inch IPS display with HD plus resolution, smaller bezels all around and 81.4% screen to body ratio. It even has the dew drop notch, just like all the phones in the same price segment. Now the next best thing about this phone would be performance. This phone sports a MediaTek Helio P35 processor with PowerVR GE8320 GPU with 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. Now going on next, this phone also comes with a super fast face and lock feature. Just like all the previous Vivo phones, face and lock works on this phone and it is insanely fast. In good lighting conditions, it's almost instantaneous. Even in low lighting conditions, it works and it is pretty fast. Now going on next, this phone also comes with a super fast fingerprint scanner. Just like the previous Vivo phones, even the fingerprint scanner on this phone is super fast. Like the phone just takes a split second to unlock the phone. Next, this phone also comes with smart split or the regular split screen mode. Split screen mode has been on Android for a very long time. But on Vivo, only few applications supported it. But with the latest update of Funtouch OS 9.0, this phone supports split screen mode for all the applications. You just need to swipe down using three fingers to open split screen mode. In this way, we can use two applications at the same time on this phone. Next, we have fingerprint gestures. First, we can take pictures with the fingerprint scanner. Once you enable this toggle in the default camera application, you can simply touch the fingerprint scanner to take a picture. Now, this feature is quite useful while taking selfies. Next, we can also pull down the notification bar using the fingerprint scanner. Once you enable this toggle, you can swipe down on the fingerprint scanner to pull down the notification bar and you can swipe up on the fingerprint scanner to send it back. Next, we have PUBG Countdown. It's a simple feature that shows you the timer on the home screen when the PUBG game starts. As of now, I was not able to make this feature work, but it might work with a future update. Next, we have GameCube, which gives us ton of options and cool automation settings, especially for playing games. You can do stuff like making calls background, you can block notifications, reject selected calls, disable Wi-Fi switching, prevent accidental touches, and many more. If you're a gamer or who plays a lot of games on your phone, you'll definitely love this feature. Next, we have smart wake gestures. Now, these are just screen of gestures and we have all of these. You can do stuff like swipe up to unlock, swipe down for camera application. You can draw a C to open the phone dialer, draw M for music player, and do a lot more crazy stuff. Now, going on next, this phone also comes with some pretty good cameras. On the rear, this phone sports a 13 megapixel primary camera and on the front, it has a 20 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture. These are some sample pictures. Now going on next, this phone also has an ultra wide angle camera on the rear. It is an 8 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture and 120 degree field of view. These are some sample shots. Now going on next, this phone even supports portrait mode for both the front and rear cameras. Now these are some sample pictures. Edge detection is pretty good on the rear camera and it's comparatively better even for the front facing camera. Next we have a pretty unique feature called short refocus. Now unlike other phones which simply take a portrait shot on this phone, you can actually select a focus point and change the amount of blur effect you want before taking a picture and even after taking a picture, open the picture in the default gallery application. Once again from here you can change the focus point and the amount of background blur effect you want. Now going on next we have navigation gestures. Just like the iPhone 10, we have navigation gestures on this phone. Once you enable it, you can swipe from the left side for the control center. Those are the notification toggles. Next, we can swipe from the center to go home, swipe and hold for recent tabs, and swipe on the right side to go back. If you don't like this setup, we can always swap the left and right gestures. Next, we have double click to light. Now, just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can double tap the screen when the phone is locked to wake it up. This goes very well with face and lock feature. You just need to double tap the screen to wake it up and once your camera sees your face, it will immediately unlock the phone. 
Overall, you will get a much more immersive experience. Next, we have some camera gestures. First one is touch to capture. Simply touch the screen to capture the shot. Next, we have voice capture. Once you enable this feature, every time you say cheese, your phone will take a picture. Now the final gesture is palm. Just show your palm to your camera and it will take a picture in 2 seconds. I find this feature really handy while taking selfies. Next we have live photo mode. Now once you enable this feature, along with the picture, your phone will record few seconds as video and link it with that picture. And you can check out the video in this way. It just adds a little story to every picture you take. It's a nice feature. Next we have a feature called app clone. Now this feature allows you to use two versions of the same application. We just need to enable this toggle and once you go to the home screen you can find two instances of the same application. So let's say if you want to use two Facebook accounts, two WhatsApp accounts or two Instagram accounts, using this feature we can do it. It's a cool feature but it only supports few social media applications. Now going on next, we have a feature called smart click. It's a quick shortcut to allow you to perform some actions when you press and hold the volume down button when the display is off. From the settings page you can configure the action, but personally I like to use the flash. When the phone is locked, I can simply press and hold the volume down button to toggle the flash. By the way, it doesn't work if you're playing some music. Next we have one-handed mode. This phone has a massive screen and obviously you need two hands to use this phone. But for some reason if you want to use this phone single-handedly, or maybe unlock the password or use the keypad single-handedly, you can do all that from these settings. To completely shrink the screen, you can do this gesture. You can do it again to maximize the screen. Next we have three finger screenshot. Now before I show you how to use that, let me show you how to take a normal screenshot. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. It is very simple and works with almost all the Android phones. Now coming back to three finger screenshot, simply enable this feature and swipe up using three fingers to take a screenshot. I really love this feature and nowadays most of the phones are offering this feature. Now going on next, we have long screenshot. Now for some reason if you want to take a longer screenshot, maybe a screenshot of a web page or something else, first you need to take a regular screenshot. Now you will get a small preview, click that and then click long screenshot button to take a longer screenshot. Next we have air and lock. Now once you enable this feature, you can simply wave your palm over the proximity sensor of your phone to unlock the phone. It only works if you don't have any password set to your phone. Personally, I would recommend you not to use this feature and always have a password and fingerprint enabled. Anyway, going on next, we have a gesture like double tap to sleep. Now once you enable this feature, you can simply double tap on an empty area on your home screen or your lock screen to lock your phone. This is kind of a unique feature and I wish we could do it even on the status bar. Next we have race to wake gesture. Now just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, whenever you pick up your phone, screen lights up and shows you the lock screen. If you have enabled face unlock feature, every time you lift your phone, display lights up, front facing camera sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. Once again, just like the double tap to wake feature, even this feature gives you a much more immersive experience while unlocking the phone. Next we have smart key bright. Once you enable this feature, your phone will use the front facing camera to see if you are using this phone and if you are using this phone, it will keep the screen on. It's a cool feature if you read a lot on your phone. Next we have a lot of smart call features which I would recommend you to check them out yourself. You can put your phone near your ear to lift the call, hold it in the hand to turn on the speaker mode, swipe over the proximity sensor to lift the call and do some other stuff. Now going on next, we can shake the phone to turn on the flash. Now once you enable this feature, you can shake your phone in the lock screen or the home screen to turn on the flash. Once the flash is turned on, you can press the power button to turn it off. If you enable double tap to sleep, it is kinda hard to use this feature. Personally, I never use this feature, instead I use smart click feature. Now going on next, we have smart reminder. Now once you enable this feature, every time you have a missed call or a notification, whenever you pick up your phone, you will get a gentle reminder. Next we have super screenshot. I've already shown you how to take a regular screenshot, long screenshot and the three finger screenshot gesture, but this one still offers a lot of things related to screenshot. To use the super screenshot feature, just open the notification bar or the control center from the bottom and press the S capture toggle. From here you can take long screenshot, rectangular screenshot, even record the screen and take some funny screenshots. Now going on next, we have flashlight notification. 
Once you enable this feature on the toggle, every time you get a call or a message, LED light on the back flickers, giving you a visible indication. It will come in handy if your phone is in silent mode in a dark room. Next we have Easy Touch, which is like a floating bubble, just like on the iPhone, with some additional options. You can single tap it for additional options, and you can also choose a custom action for double tap, like going back, going to the home screen, pulling down the notification bar, or taking a screenshot. It is exactly like the floating bubble on the iPhone. Now going on next, we have eye protection mode. According to a research, using smartphones, tablets, or anything that emits blue light at night affects your sleep. So once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters all the blue light. You can also change the intensity of the tint to make the display look more warmer or a little bit lighter. And we can also automatically turn it on and turn it off at a specific time. Next we have Super Power Saver Mode. Once you enable this feature, all the applications running in the background will be killed and you will be given access to only few applications like Phone Dialer, Messenger and some other apps. These are the only applications that you can use. But once you enable this feature, it will drastically improve your battery life. Let's say you are running really low on battery and don't want your phone to die, just want to answer a few calls, just enable this mode and your phone will last for hours. Now going on next, this phone even comes with an app lock built into the system. For the first time when you open it up, it will ask you to set a password and then select the applications that you want to lock. Now the best thing about this phone is we can unlock the locked applications using password or the fingerprint scanner or even by using face unlock feature. So if you use face unlock feature, most of the time when you open a locked application, because of super fast face unlock feature, you won't even see the lock screen. Next we have task timer. This feature is also called a scheduled power on and power off on other phones and as the name suggests, it will allow you to power off and power on your phone at a specific time. Next we have a feature called network management where we can disable internet access to applications over Wi-Fi and mobile data. Normally many people won't be using this feature, but if you're someone who wants absolute control over your phone or maybe you don't want applications to access internet or if you want to block games on your phone, you can use this feature and block internet access to those applications. Next we have wireless display. Using this feature we can cast the screen of your phone to a smart TV or any device with Miracast. As far as I've tested it, it works with Miracast but doesn't work with a Chromecast. Next we have floating video player. Now this is a stock video player that comes pre-installed on this phone and once you play a video in this application, it gives you the option to play the video in a floating window. And this is how it looks like. In the normal mode, we can swipe on the right side to change the volume, swipe on the left side to change the brightness, and swipe left or right to change the playback position. Next we have bike mode. Now this is a brand new feature that's popping up in all the phones, which gives you additional options like rejecting all the calls when you're in a ride. You can also accept few favorite calls. You can configure it in that way. You also get the feature to auto respond with the message and prevent you from answering calls if your speed is more than 10 km per hour. Next we have background apps. By default, this phone is configured to kill all the applications running in the background after some time. But if you don't want some applications to be killed, say like WhatsApp or Facebook, you can whitelist those applications from here. Next we have auto start management. When you kill applications from the recent apps page, some applications restart automatically and run in the background. Apps like Facebook and WhatsApp might be important, but apps like Amazon Flipkart or even UC browser need not run in the background. So from this page, you can block such applications from restarting in the background and thereby improve the battery life. Next we have auto call recording. If you're someone like me who wants to record all the calls that they make or get, we can do it on this phone. Just go to the phone dialer settings and we have the option to record all the calls on this phone automatically. So guys, those were all the best features about this phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on tips and tricks. Link will be in the description. Now if you're planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off. Have a nice day.